Good morning, everybody. Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV. We're playing 4th Street Baseball. It's game three of the 2019 season between the Mets and the Washington Nationals. The Mets have taken an 8-1 to one lead here, so it's not a very close game in the top of the seventh. The big hits for the Mets were a three-run homer by Thomas Nito in the top of the second and a three-run homer by uh, J.D. Davis in the top of the sixth inning. So Wander Suero's on the mound for the Nats, and he's facing Ahmed Rosario, who's a righty. So it's righty versus righty. We're looking at the matchup right here. We're going to see. We're going to roll 2d10 and find out what the result is for that. And let's see what it's going to be. I'm going to read the green first, and it's going to be an 11. An 11 on the matchup is higher than a 10, which would be the first baseman. So a 9 and a 10 would be a first baseman. So up to 10 goes the first baseman. And beyond that, it's going to be the second baseman. So it's going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. I guess it could be a line drive. could be a pop-up, uh, perhaps, to the second baseman. So something's going on with the second baseman. And it's second base for the Nats. I believe it's Brian Dozier. It is Brian Dozier. And uh, we're going to check Brian Dozier's numbers. There's a little chart you do that, and I'll show you what that chart looks like. Uh, let's see, that's the Met chart. And the, and the, the other chart is going to be right here. All right, so let's look at Dozier. And it's going to tell us that Dozier is a 5 at second base. All right. So it's a, a 5 at second base. And we're going to basically now look off the versus the infield. It was hit to the infield against a right-handed pitcher. It's a 16. So a 16 on Rosario minus 5 is an 11. We're going to roll a D20. Let's see what that is. And it's higher than the 11. So it's going to be off of the second baseman. Then we're going to roll a 2D6. And that's a total of a 6. So now we're going to the second baseman, Dozier. We're looking at column six, and that is a 64, which is a hard hit ground ball right at him. He scoops it up and throws out Rosario for out number one. I like writing with a pen because it's darker and it's easier to see. Uh, let's see what I got here. Ah, I got this one. Let's see if this, this one still works. This is an old pen of mine. So the pencil is always too light, so this is a little bit... Uh, I don't like that either. I don't like that either. Let's see what else I got. This one looks so oh, no, it's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. Uh, this one may work. This one may work as well. All right, so let's try this. We'll get it a little bit darker. I don't like how that one writes. Okay, so we got a ground ball to, to second base out of that. And here's Keon Broxton. Again, the righty versus righty. Now, Wander Swerve can go five, and he's gone one, two, three, four, five. So that means that the next hit, he will be he will be tired, and I will pull him. All right, so let's see what the matchup is. Again, we're going to look on Swerve's matchup section against the righty. Here we're going to roll a 2d10, and we got a 27. A 27 versus a righty is going to be, it's beyond the 23, which is third base. So it goes beyond that all the way up to 32. It would be shortstop. Hold on a second because my dog is, come on, baby, relax. Shh. All right, so where were we? It was a 27. So when I hear him chewing on stuff, it's probably one of my cards or one of my sets of cards. Hey, hey, no, no. We're not doing that right now, okay? We're not doing that right now. No. 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 Stop. Um, all right, you're leaving now. That's it. No. Stop. Okay. Down. Get down. Come on. Get down. All right, I'm sorry about that. I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of that. I'll clip it out. I'll... We're back to the game, and Keon Broxton is up. We rolled a 27 against a righty. A 27 is going to be to the shortstop. 
up to 23 would be the third baseman. Beyond that, between uh, 24 and 32 would be to the shortstop. So again, we're going to check the shortstop. The shortstop for the Nats is Turner, who is a 4. So to the infield here, it's an 11 minus 4. It's a 6. So we're going to roll the d20. And it's an 18, so that's going to be off of the shortstop. And that's a 9, so we're going to look off of the shortstop. A 9 off of Turner is a 66, and that is going to be against the ground ball. It's easy to memorize these. Hard ground ball to Turner, and he throws them out. So Broxton grounds out, and he is 0 for 3 today, as you can see. He walked here, but he's 0 for 3, walk, and the run scored. And finally, it's going to be Thomas Nito, who's... Uh, How's Nito done? He's two for three with a three run homer and four RBIs. So he's having quite a day. All right, so we're going to look at the matchup. That's the first thing you always got to do. You got to throw that, those 2D10. That's a 51 against a righty again. That 51 is going to take us to versus the pitcher. So that's going to give us our pitcher column, our fastball, breaking ball. And this is always an interesting uh, interaction. Um, so it's a right-handed batter, so we're going to find out if it's a fastball or breaking ball with a plus three. It's going to be at least, uh, let's see. Let's see if I have that out. Oh, I don't have that out. It's a special chart, and it's easy to find. You go to, uh, you can actually try this game out for free. You can go to 4th Street Baseball. Go to 4th Street Baseball, and... And just uh, download the free teams and try this game out. I think it's it's fun. It uh, you know it takes a little practice, it takes a little viewing. And uh, here's a basic manual. Let's try the, the advanced manual. The advanced manual is going to give us a chart that we need to figure out if it's a fastball or a curveball. I'll show you. Pretty easy to do. I don't have it printed out. I should print it out so I can show you guys. But let me see. We have to roll to figure it out. We got to roll two d six and let's do that. It's going to be a 10, and that almost guaranteed is not going to be, is going to be a breaking ball. Almost guaranteed, but we're going to double check with a plus three. And it's a plus three. The reason it's a plus three is because here against the righty, you see the fastball is a nine and the breaking ball is a six. So it's a plus three. And I got to plug in the phone. So we're looking for the chart real quick. We're almost there. We'll get we're right about to get to the chart. And let's see, a plus three. I should have this. There it is. Okay, plus three is two two to seven, then eleven and twelve, and we rolled a ten. So there's it's a breaking ball. So a breaking ball is a six versus the pitcher. Versus a right-handed pitcher, because this is a pitcher matchup, this is a 17. So 17 minus 6 is an 11. we got to roll our d20. And it's an 18, so it's going to be off of the pitcher. And that's usually probably a strikeout or a walk. And we don't know. Oh, it's going to be the 10. The 10, it's a breaking ball. 10, and that is going to be a strikeout to retire the side. So he strikes out Nito. And we go to the bottom of the 7th. Washington's coming to bat. It's an 8-1 to one Mets score. It's not a really close game. I wish it were a close game. But it's not. Zach Wheeler's still in there. We're going to try to push him to get through seven innings. That would be nice to do that. So I'm going to set this up up here. Who do we have coming up? Zimmerman, Gomes, and Dozier are coming up. So here's Zimmerman. Again, we're, he's a righty batter. We're going to check the matchup. So we got to roll that, that 2-D-10 to check the matchup. That's the first thing you do. It's a 99. Oh, this is a good one because this is going to be a ballpark challenge. So let's get the ballpark up. This is one of the fun, the most fun things of this about this game because you actually get a ballpark or something that resembles one for every every uh, every stadium. Uh, I, I'm not using weather effects. I'm not using pitch count. I'm playing the basic game. Um, I haven't gotten to that stage yet. Maybe someday I will. Who knows? Um, but here's ballpark, and it's pretty simple. The first thing we're going to do is roll 2d10. Uh, actually, the first thing we're going to do, yep, 
That's what we're going to do. We're going to roll 2d10, and we're going to see where it was hit in the ballpark. All right, it's going to be an 82, but here you have the fielders. See those X's? Those are the fielders. Those are stationary fielders. You can move them to different places depending on the batter. I just chose to leave them where they're at right now. Like just play straight away. You know, you could move this X. You can have a little token and put him there. So you can have three fielders. He's a righty, so he's probably pulling it. So I would move my second baseman over and I would, uh, you know, leave my first baseman there. And I guess maybe you can slide the outfielders over a little bit, but I'm not doing all that. So it's an 82. 82 is going to take us to the M section. You see 80 to 87. So this is where he hits it. So he actually hits it to the opposite field. Um, so he's going to hit it to the opposite field. Now we have to see the distance and we have to look at his power number. What is Zimmerman's power number versus a right-handed pitcher? It's a zero. So he's not going to get any plus points on that. But now it has a lot to do with the roll of the D20 because the higher the D20, the more chance for a home run. The lower the D20, there's a possibility that it's caught or there's a possibility that it's hit. One to 10 is going to be a single. Let's see what we rolled on the D20. It's an 18. Oh boy. That's a deep drive to M, to section M18, and that's over the fence into the stands for a home run. So it's a solo shot leading off the bottom of the seventh inning for Ryan Zimmerman. All right, so it's eight to two now, and here is Jan Gomes. Again, he's a righty, we're checking that matchup right here where it says match. It's a 49 and a 49 is going to be to the right fielder. So the right fielder for the Mets is Conforto. Conforto's number Conforto's number, let's see, he's right there, is a 5. So then we're going to check Jan Gomes against a right-handed pitcher to the outfield is a 14. 14 minus 5 is a 9. Now we roll our D20, and it's a 19. So that's going to be off of Conforto. So Conforto's going to make the play. We're going to read it off his result card. And we need the 2D10. And we roll a 5 off of Conforto. He's right there. That's going to be an 89. That's a... Let's see what that is. It's a fly ball, but is it a deep drive? Is it a medium fly ball? And 89 is going to be a short fly ball. So that's the one that... Conforto races in for, and he gets there for the out, for out number one. So Gomes flies out to right field, and here comes Brian Dozier. Now, Wheeler can go 28. He hasn't reached his third time around the batting order, so he's not at uh, uh, 27 yet, so he still has a couple batters to go. We're going to see Dozier and then a pinch hitter for Corbin. It'll probably be Adams. All right, so the first thing we have to do against Dozier, uh, again, he's a righty batter. So this is really major uh, lefty-righty um, matchups. Uh, this is the, one of the primarily driving forces or driving mechanisms behind this game is the, the lefty-righty type of approach. So for guys that really like that, uh, this is a game for you. And this got, you know, all time, this has got tremendous research. Uh, this game. All right, so here let's let's uh, roll the two d10 and see what we get for the matchup. It's going to be a 19. A 19 versus a righty again is going to fall within the 19 to 24 range of the third baseman. The third baseman for the Nats is still Anthony Rendon. He's no longer with the team, but back then in 2019 he was. And Rendon, I believe, is a six off the top of my head. He is a six. So we're going to look. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we're, we have to look at the Mets. Okay, so let's let's try this again. So it's a 19, and it's going to be off of a right fielder. Um, let's try this again. 14, 30. Okay, so it's a 19, and that's going to be hit to the third baseman. The third baseman for the Mets is going to be J.D. Davis. And J.D. Davis defense on the chart, and we're gonna look at that chart right now. His defense is a three of oh, so we don't have. This doesn't show us his his. Uh, it shows us his primary position. He played left field primarily, so we're gonna have to look at his card. So 
So let's pull his card and look at his defense. And a third base, he's a four. Okay, and uh, Dozier versus infield is a 14 versus a right-handed pitcher, 14. So 14 minus four is a 10. Now we roll over d20 and it's a 19. So it's gonna be off of uh, JD Davis's card. So we're gonna have to look at his def defensive card. There it is. So we're gonna get a, a result off that. Let's see what that is. And it's gonna be a five off his third base. A five will be an 85. There's nobody on, so an 85 is a line out to third base. L5, so two out. So Dozier lines out, and here's Patrick Corbin, or actually uh, the relief pitcher who came in, Wander Suero, and he's going to be in an 8-2 to two game. And Wander's already got his max, so we're going to bring in Adams, who I have already here, right there. Matt Adams is going to pin, pinch hit. All right, now Matt Adams is a lefty, so this is going to switch the matchup from the right column to the left column. So let's look for that matchup, see what, what comes up. It's a 66. This is going to be a pitcher matchup. So a pitcher versus a left-handed hitter. Is it a breaking ball or is it a fastball? So he's a plus one, and that is going to be an 11 on the plus one, and that is a fastball. So he throws um, Adams a fastball versus a righty. It's a 16 minus 7. And that is a 9, so we're going to roll that d20 and see. And it's a 13, so it's above that, so it's going to be off the pitcher. And uh, I don't remember what we rolled. We just roll again, it doesn't matter. And it's a 9, and that's going to be a strikeout. So Wheeler strikes out the pinch hitter, Adams, to retire the side. And I'm using that as a, as a placeholder for the pitcher's, pitcher's spot. Just flip the card over. All right, so we go to the top of the eighth inning, and it's going to be a new, new pitcher for the Nats. Plus, um, we're going to have a a pinch hitter for Wheeler as well. So we got a pinch hitter and a new pitcher, and we're going to bring in Justin uh, uh, Justin Miller. Justin Miller is going to be. Now this game has extra players, and Justin Miller, I have him. It's strange because there's some guys who are extra players, um, and they have black and white cards, and then the same extra player has a color card. So I don't know. There must have been some sort of confusion in the creation of these guys. So I'm not sure why that happened. But it's the top of the eighth inning. The score is 8-2. to two. Um, And it's going to be... Leading off should be the pitcher. Why do we have JD? Oh, J we use JD Davis because we used his card. That's why we, we looked at his defensive card. All right, so let's put him back in order. Thomas Nito. Okay, so here's uh, Wander Swirls out. It's the pitcher spot. So we're going to get a pinch hitter here. And who's it going to be? Um, let's see who the Mets are using to pinch hit. Let's see who's on the roster. Uh, Justin Miller is a righty, so we're going to bring in uh, McNeil. Jeff McNeil is going to pinch hit. We could also bring in Smith. You know what? I'm going to bring in Dom Smith. Also, I could bring in Ligaris. Ligaris hasn't played in a few days. This is the third game of a three-game set. The Mets lost the last game. All right, I'm going to bring in McNeil because it's the first guy that I found. So McNeil's going to pinch hit. So he's a lefty versus a righty, so we're going to look on the matchup on the left side. So the first thing you got to do again is roll for the matchup, see what happens. 
and it's a 90. That's going to take us versus a lefty. It's going to be a versus the pitcher. So versus the left-handed batter. We're going to roll to see if it's a fastball or a breaking ball. And it's going to be a four. That's going to be a fastball. So it's a fastball versus a left-handed batter and versus the a right-handed pitcher. He's a 17. 17 minus three is a 14. We're going to roll the d20. And that's a three. So it's going to be off the batter against a righty pitcher. So we're going to get the result, which we have, um, it's going to be a five, and that's going to be a base on balls against a right-handed pitcher. Number five is a 44, and that's a walk. So McNeil walks, he's on a first against Justin Miller. All right, next is Brandon Nimmo. Nimmo today is two for five. He's got three strikeouts and, and two singles. So let's check the matchup against it's versus a lefty. And it's an 88. That is going to be a pitcher matchup versus a lefty. We're going to see if it's a fastball or, okay, it's a nine. So that's going to be a breaking ball. So a breaking ball versus a left-handed hitter is a three. And versus a pitcher versus a right-handed pitcher is a 20 minus three is a 17. We're going to roll with a 20. And it's a 17, so it's going to be off the batter versus a right-handed pitcher. And uh, that's a 7. I rolled again. I don't have to. But it's a 7 is going to be a base on ball, so back-to-back -back walks. Back-to-back -back walks, and up comes Alonzo. Pete Alonzo's up. Alright, so let's find out what the matchup tells us is going to happen. And it's a 20. We just rolled a 20. And versus, again, versus a right-handed pitcher. Uh, I'm sorry, versus a right-handed batter. A 20 is a ball hit to the second baseman, Dozier. And Dozier at second base is a 5. And the infield rating for... Hitting the ball to the infield, rating for Alonzo is a 16. 16 minus 5 is an 11. We're going to roll a 20. And it's a 20, so it's going to be off Dozier. So this could be, um, let's see what this is going to end up being. Uh, I believe we rolled a, uh, yeah, I don't think we did that yet. All right, so we got an 8 on Dozier. And that's going to be a 64, which I believe is going to be a hard ground ball for a double play. So the runner's on first and second. Let's see, a 64. Not a hard ground out, so it is a double play. So it's a 4, 6, 3 double play, and runner on third now with two outs. And up comes Robbie Cano. Unfortunately, Robbie Cano sabotaged his own career by, by ingesting some, some performance-enhancing drugs, and he's out for the season. He was suspended for the season. He's already 37, so next year he'll be 38. In his prime, he was one of a uh, very, very impressive hitter with a beautiful swing, one of my favorite players. So it's 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 kind of very sad that he's not around this year to you know be a positive influence on the bench. But he did the wrong thing, uh, big mistake. So anyway, uh, runner on third, two outs, and Robbie Cano's up. We're going to check the matchup again versus another lefty and uh, zero eight. So that's going to, oh, against a lefty, that's going to be a power number. So this goes directly to his power, to Cano's power column. And we just roll the two D6, which is a seven in his power column. And that is going to be, oh, a deep drive to the right center field. Back goes the right fielder, eaten to the track, to the wall, looks up, and that's out of here. Two-run shot makes it a 10-2 to two ball game. And he drives in number nine, and then himself number three. So I get two RBIs there. And that's how I do the RBIs. So it's a 10-2 to two ball game. Robbie Cano has a two-run homer, so, so far. Three big home runs by the Mets in this game. Nito in the second, J.D. Davis in the sixth, and Robbie Cano in the eighth. And this is a mauling of the Nats. And here comes J.D. Davis. 
Again, we're looking at the matchup versus a righty this time. And it's a 0, 8 versus a righty. It's again, it's going to be power column. It automatically goes to J.D. Davis's power column. So we roll the 2D6 and we get an 11. 11 in the power column is going to be a 79. 79 result is a deep fly ball to right field. That goes Eaton and he hauls it in to retire the side. Let the Mets pick up a couple of runs. On, uh, on one major hit and a walk. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. 10 to two ball game. And Zach Wheeler's out. So it's going to be Robles versus. Trying to pitch. Oh, you know what? We can bring in Familia. Familia didn't really pitch too much in yesterday's game. You get mostly every player. Hmm. It's late. It is uh, five in the morning. Woke up about two. Here's Jerry Familiar. Sorry for the delay. What was that? What was that at? Twenty six thirty nine. All right, it's ten to two ball game. We're playing Fourth Street Baseball. This is Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV. And. Uh, it's going to be Robles. Victor Robles, he's a right-hand hitter versus a right-handed pitcher. So we're looking at the matchup on the right side. Let's roll those 2D10 and see what it tells us. All right, it's an 80. That's going to be probably versus the pitcher. It is going to be versus the pitcher versus a righty. So it's going to be a fastball or a breaking ball. That's what we got to find out. Let's find out. That is a 7. So it's going to be a breaking ball. And we'll double check that. But I'm just learning that. I learned those numbers. Plus two. Oh no, it goes up to seven. Let's make sure it's a plus two against a righty. And it looks like a five, so it is a plus two. So that seven does fall within the fastball range. So now it becomes a seven versus a right handed pitcher. 13 minus seven is a six. So we're going to roll the d20. That's a 16. So that's going to be off the pitcher. Pitcher wins it because it's higher. Um. So now we're gonna uh, we're gonna roll the two d six. Oh, actually we rolled uh, it was a seven. What we we'll roll? It's a seven again. Versus a right-handed hitter, and that's gonna be a walk. A forty-four is a walk. So Victor Robles starts the inning with a base on balls. So familiar did have issues with control in twenty nineteen. Next is going to be Adam Eaton. He's a lefty now, so we're looking on this side of the matchup column. And we're throwing those 2D10, and it's an 87. This is going to be another pitcher matchup. But this time it's versus a lefty. Is it a, oh, a plus three? It's going to go two to two to eight, I believe, on a plus three. Oh, no, that's a plus four. So a plus three is going to be a two to seven, 11, and a 12. And it's a nine, so it's going to be a breaking ball. So a breaking ball is a four. There's a right-handed pitcher, he's a 16, so that's 16 minus 4 is a 12. Let's throw the d20, and it's going to go to the pitcher. So he throws a breaking ball to a lefty, and we roll a 7, 41. And a 41 on the chart with a runner on first is a wild pitch. All right. So again, we roll, we do it all over again. Let's see what the matchup is. Again, we're looking at the left side. It's a 29, and that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. And the shortstop, Rosario. Shortstop, Rosario. Is a 5. So Eaton Hill versus a righty pitcher. Hits it to the 
to the infield. It's a 5 minus 16. That's an 11. An 11. And now we're going to roll the d20. And that's a 3. So that's going to be Eaton who wins it. So we're going to read it off Eaton. It's less than, equal or less than. And now we're going to roll the... I could have used the 11, and I'll use the 11. I just... Uh, it's going to be an 80. When it's a, when it ends in a zero, you got to add the position, the fielding position number. It was hit to the shortstop. Um, so it was hit to the the shortstop with. Uh, so that's going to be a six. Shortstop is a six. Third baseman is a five. Second baseman is a four. So it's going to be a 66. And a 66 is going to tell us that it's a hard hit ground ball. Double play. But he's at second base, so otherwise, other runners advance one base. So it's a ball hitting the hole and long throw for Rosario, and he throws out Eaton just by half a step. Moving to third is Robles. Next is Trey Turner. Again, he's a righty now, so we're going to look on the righty side of the matchup. And we're going to roll that 2d10, and that's a 94. 94 is a versus the pitcher's defense. Oh no. Defense is here. So again, it continues to be versus the pitcher, another matchup versus the pitcher. So it is a fast is it a fastball or breaking ball? Let's see. And that's gonna be it's gonna be a fastball. So it's a seven versus the right-handed pitcher. It's a 14. So that's 14 minus 7 is a 7. We're gonna roll a D20. And that's a 4. So it's gonna be Trey Turner. We're gonna read it off Trey Turner's card, and that's a 5 that we have there, and that's gonna be a 54. And a 54. With a runner on third, we're playing back. It's a slow ground ball. And, uh, and it's going to be second base, so that will get him an RBI, and it's going to be 10 to 3 now. Runner scores from third, two outs. And here comes Rendon. All right. So again, he's a right-handed hitter. So the for and endurance, he's got he's allowed to face five batters. So far, he's faced three. So it's going to be a 48, 48 versus a righty this time is going to be a fly ball right field. Conforto in right is a five, and Rendon to the outfield is a 17 minus five is a 12. So 12 or less. It's going to be off the batter, and it is less. It's a seven. So we're going to read it off Rendon to the outfield. See what happens there. We're going to roll the 2d6, and that's a 7 to the outfield, and that's a 20. A 20 plus the, not, the, the 9 for the position number of the outfield. There's a 29, and a 29 with nobody on base is going to be a drive, and that's going to... The right fielder plays the count into second base, goes Rendon with a double, a two-out double for Rendon. And here comes Juan Soto. Again, Juan Soto's a lefty, so we're checking the versus the lefty side now. And that's a 50. And that's going to fall to the right fielder again. And what do we say Conforto was? We said he was a 5. So a 5 minus 17 is, uh, or 17 minus 5 is a 12. So we're going to roll that to 20. Is it above or it's going to be below the 12, so it's going to be off. We're going to read it off of Soto. We're going to roll the 2d6 and see what that was tell us. And it's going to be a 3. And the 3 is a 30. Plus, since it ends in a 0, you got to add Conforto's 9. That's his position number. Uh, so it's going to be a 39. And the 39 is going to be a triple. So that's a drive. One hop off the wall and bounds away from Conforto. Coming in to score Renfro and trying for third is Soto. Here's the relay and the tag, and he is safe with an RBI, a two-out RBI triple. So Familia's getting banged up a little bit here. And it's a 10 to 4 score now. Actually, yeah, it's 10 to 4. And here comes Ryan Zimmerman. He won two, three, four, five. So he's gone five. That's his endurance. You see his endurance right there. So the next hit, the way I play it, I don't know exactly what the rule is, but the way I play it is if he gives up another hit beyond that, he gets pulled. If he, I'm going to try to get him to finish the inning because there are two outs already. 
So let's see what the matchup is. It's a righty, so we're going to look at the right side. And it's going to be, oh, yep, it's a 64, and that's going to be off the pitcher versus a righty. So is it a fastball or is it a breaking ball? And it's a 7. It's a plus 2. 7 will be a fastball. So 7 versus a right handed pitcher is a 15 minus 7 is an 8. Throw the d20. Is it above or below the 8? It's below the 8, so it's going to go to Zimmerman. All right, Zimmerman to the pitcher, and we're going to roll. We had a 7, so we're going to use that 7, and that's going to be a base on balls. Wow. So that's it for, that's it for Familia. And who we got coming up? Gomes. Crazy. So we're going to bring in... Uh, Seth Lugo. Ten four. You know what? I'm going to bring in a guy named Avila. Luis Avilan. So I'm going to bring in Avilan. He's a lefty, but it's a ten to four game, so I'm not worried about the matchup right now. Just want to get out of the inning. So Avilan comes in. He goes point point two. After Wheeler went seven, and now it's Avilon. All right, so let's look at the matchup. It's going to be versus a right-handed hitter. And it's a 74 versus a righty. That's going to be off the pitcher. So is it a fastball or a breaking ball? He's minus one, so that is two to six and 12. Let's see. Here we roll. Throw an eight, so it's going to be a breaking ball. A breaking ball to a right-handed batter is a five. Versus a lefty pitcher is a 15, minus five is a 10. We roll the d20, and it's a 17, so it's going to be a pitcher's victory. Versus a right-handed batter, throwing a breaking ball. And the result is that we have the eight, and the eight is going to be a strikeout. So he strikes out, Gomes stand the inning. But the Nats pick up a couple of runs and on a couple of walks and a couple of hits. So the score now is 10 to 4. And uh, we go to the top of the ninth inning. And I'm going to stop the video. I hope uh, you enjoyed the presentation of Boy Street Baseball and uh, you get how it works. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. You just got to get the steps and practice it, play a couple innings. Uh, that's how I learned it. I played a couple innings and I took a break and played another couple innings and took a break and like that. And uh, and that's about it. So uh, the next team that the Mets face is going to be Miami in Miami. So uh, we'll see what happens there. So this is CP Cards and Dice, Tony Porter for Cards and Dice TV, Fourth Street Baseball. See you later.